welcome back to another video. Today we're going to show you how to replace um, film door light seals on this camera. This is the uh, star of a previous video. This was the world's first uh, mass-produced autofocus camera. This is a Kanika C35. So we'll take the case off because we don't need that. And uh, make sure that there's no uh, no batteries in it. It was a good idea to remove batteries before you start working on the camera, so there's no batteries in there. And uh, yeah, it's a nice camera, it works, but it has some uh, issues with the back door light seals, front door light seals. So let me open it up. Let's come around here so you can get a better look. Okay, the light seals on the back of the film door normally run around the edges of the film door, pretty obvious. Really, so you can see this rail up here. And along this edge here. And then down this side. There's a sort of seal there. And across this bottom and around here there's a seal. And then up here... There's a seal as well, there's a remnants of a seal, I've already been in there and taken the bulk of the rotten stuff out. It doesn't hurt to leave a little bit in there because it will help the new seal stick. Um, the degradation doesn't pass from the old material to the new material. So you can leave a little bit in there, it normally goes a bit gucky and liquidy almost. So I've got my little box of tricks here. Very simple tools, you don't really need very much. Um, you need a stick. That's one of my sticks. Where's the other stick? The proper, the proper stick. Box of rubbish. I don't know where my stick is. Yeah. We're also going to be needing some. You can buy these pre cut where you can buy a sheet and cut it yourself. I'd recommend using a guillotine for that. Oh, there's my prop stick. So you need a tool a bit like this, a cocktail stick or a, something like that. The camera's not going to focus on that. It's a fine wooden tool that you can use to, um, to run along the seals, where the seals sit. And you basically scrape out all of that rubbish that's in there. A um, little bit of tissue is a good idea on kitchen roll. And for the stubborn stuff, what I tend to use is um, lighter fluid. Other brands are available. This is the sort of stuff you use for refilling Zippos. It's kind of a refined petroleum product. And just a little bit of this on the end of your stick. And this will help dissolve. And I say I've already done this camera and cleaned most of it out. That's in there, but you can see there is um, nasty stuff. Like I say, you can leave a little bit of it in there because it will help the new materials to, to stay in place. You don't have to be that particular about it. Some people tape over this part here. Um, this is a leaf shuttered camera, so the shutter is right the way down here. It's quite out of the way. Obviously, you don't want any of this material going in that hole. So, it depends if you're careful or if you're a clumsy person. You know who you are. If you're clumsy, then put a bit of tape over the top of here, a bit of masking tape, or a bit of electrical tape across there. And we just clear that out. So yeah, a little wooden stick like a toothpick or um, these are ones I think I got them off eBay as part of a camera sort of repair kit. There's an even bigger fatter one there, but that's not really an awful lot of use to us. Like I say, you can buy this stuff in most hobby shops. It's just foam. It's been pre-cut and it uh, should have a sticky backside, although it'll stay in quite happily. On its own some of them have got uh, there's some more different types of foam here which this we're probably going to use on the door as you can see this is sticky back foam so I'm just going to cut off one of these 
This is where your stick's going to come into play again. And this has been laser cut so that it fits in the right size. And then that just sits in there. Take it right up to the end. And then you just gently push it in. Now along here, on the top, we normally have a bit where it resets the film counter. So all you have to do is cut either side of that. And then you can just continue to push that in. Like so. And then we want a little piece there as well. So we can start from the other end. stick in there, yes it is. Again, we just cut that really close to where that... I haven't got the steadiest of hands anymore, but... There we go. Take our stick. And... That bit insists on pointing up. Around the corner. You can see why it's an advantage to have some of the older material left in there. Make sure you don't go over the top of that. There's always a little lever there that when you open the back door, that will uh, uh, will reset the frame counter. And then we've got this edge along here. So this bit is just about the right size for that. So you fairly steady hands. It's not too difficult to do. Just be patient. down across there and we just turn the end of that off there like so oh, killing my back this bench here just push that in like so and the bottom one to do some more uh, material. This one's a bit tricky because it sort of goes around in a loop. So this one will be a bit more of a challenge. So I suggest pushing it down into the bottom of the loop first. Get the right end of the stick. It does tend to twist this stuff if you're not careful. You want to try and keep it as straight as you possibly can. level if it starts to twist you can just uh, pull it back out and start again uh, and that's got to come round to there so I need to trim that off so that's going to come down you can see that that's twisted from about there look so you get the right end pull that along oh. and we just trim that down a little bit and then I'm hand in the way so I that just neatly folds off down into that area there 
keep your spare bits because you always need little bits of uh, little bits of it. There's no waste with it. You can always, if you haven't got any long enough bits, you can always join them. You can use two bits or three bits, but it's a lot easier if you just do it in one run. But there's always room for small bits. So looking at that, happy with that. That's still free to reset the frame counter. So the only bit we got is along this edge here now, which is along this back plate here. And it's a very sort of, it was a little bit there, I'll say. So in this kit that I bought, you get all sorts of different foams. So it's what kind of foam do you think is going to be suitable? This foam isn't really dense enough. This is a bit too leathery. I think this one would probably be the one for that. Because it has to go. It has to sit in behind this metal sort of shroud. So this might be too thick. It is too thick. So we need something that's a bit thinner. So I'm not mad keen on that one. something that's going to sit in behind there and I think that's the kitty for that so we want a little strip of that I don't have a guillotine which is a shame because I don't have a guillotine it's on my to wish list by cut the piece off before we take the backing off we measure it up just to see for length and for width. It's about the right sort of length. It's a little bit too long, I think. For that, a little bit too wide. So I need to trim a bit of that off. Try and fit again. See how well that fits. Yep, that fits pretty well. It's not going to interfere with closing the back, I don't think. Pretty good. When you're cleaning, you will find residue along these edges. That's normally the giveaway. If you're looking at the camera you're going to buy, open up the film back and just have a look along these edges around, and you'll see like black, lumpy stuff. If these are degraded, um, where the camera back's been closed on it, it will stick to this. These normally the top and the bottom. Sometimes it'll stick along this edge here. And again, you can just clean that off. Um, in, in invaluable cotton buds and some lighter fluid and you can clean that off so you clean all the residue off right oh, there's ebay again it's sunday so it's a busy day on ebay it's a job to buy anything on a sunday though because everything's expensive at the weekend ebay tip for you buy in the week a lot cheaper especially Sunday evening that seems to be the peak time I can't get this back in off this it's so well stuck I don't really have the, the grip to get hold of it it's a fiddly job you can take it into some other well if you can find the camera shop that still offers a repair service or you can send it off to a specialist um, to do a, a seal replacement. These little point and shoots, I do them yourself because SLRs are a bit more complicated. They have foams around the shutter assemblies and around the prisms, and there's a lot more dismantling involved. I will show you that. It's one of the downsides of the Olympus OMs is that they tend to rot out and you get black gunk all over the prism, which is horrible. And there's no need for that stuff to really to be in there. It's just over-engineering by Olympus at the time. 
you can remove it and just leave it with nothing in there and it still works fine. And obviously because this is sticky and it's got a slide behind something it doesn't want to go. I've chosen an easier camera to do than this one. Eh? It's a job to... <laughs> sticks to my finger more than it sticks to the camera but you get the idea fiddle fiddle and eventually perseverance will pay off he says wooden stick Let's see if that has any effect on it Slot it down with the wooden stick. Oh. That is really annoying. Yeah, that is not so easy. That one. Oh. And the wooden stick has ripped the, uh, the light sealing material. So this is a, an instructional video about how not to do it. This camera's a bit awkward because it's got this bit here. Most cameras don't have this black plate here. So they would probably be a lot easier to do than this one is. I can't really take it off because it's riveted on. I've got this side down pretty good. This side is sticking like a mother now. <laughs> a delicate touch and perseverance. And uh, oh, these are super sticky. Super, super sticky. side on but not the other side. A knife would be quite useful for that just to slide it in behind it so the stickiness isn't touching the sticky bit. Let's try that. We will not be defeated. This video will be twice as long as I anticipated. They're nice too thick to get in there. Of course it'll stick to the knife like a bitch on it. This is where you could do with the non-sticky stuff really. But there you go, that's how you replace the foams in uh, the film back foam in a camera. It's not too difficult to do. It saves wasting a lot of film. Like I say, when you're testing out a new camera, if you just bought a camera, shoot the first couple of um, exposures normally and then use some black electrical insulation tape just to tape around the back of the camera and then the rest of your film, you know you shouldn't have any light leaks on it. If the first five frames are clear and got no light leaks, then you know that your camera light leaks are okay. But um, even when they're deteriorated, they can sometimes um, be light tight. But if you look at the phones and you see this black mess, you know, along the door, etc., that really is a signal that it's time to get the uh, 
the phone's replaced. Like I say, these are the easier cameras to do because you don't really have to do any. Oh, there again. You don't have to do any of the phones that are inside. The actual camera itself, so there's no disassembly required. It's just a matter of opening the door. So there you go, folks. That's how you replace the film back light seal phones. And uh, that's sticking out of there a little bit. It's not really low enough. Could do with being lower than that. I'm not happy with that at all. So, I'm going to rip that out. That is really super sticky stuff, that is. Right, we're going to do that one again. It wasn't as sick as that one. A little strip of that. And then... That's going to slide in there because it's got the backing on it, will slide in quite nicely. Like so. Take it from a different angle, push that down into there, push that down into there. not sticking out through the hinge which is good so what I'm going to do this time I think is because of the, there's a bit of room there to get in there my sort of thoughts are if I can separate this from that <laughs> he says and then I'm just going to stick it down on this end and on this end. I need to just uh, remove the backing from the end rather than removing all of it. So separate that like so. And I can get the scissors in there. I can remove the backing. Same on this end. So, separate these two from each other like so. You think surgeons got a difficult job? This bit of paper came out. Job done. If at first you don't succeed, try and try again, as they say. So it's uh, no batteries in it. So there you go, folks. How to replace your uh, film back foam. It's a place where you're most likely to fog your film, to be honest. Um, Hope you enjoyed, hope you found it interesting and um, yeah, have a go at doing it yourself and uh, you can't really mess it up, um, he says. <laughs> but um, you can buy these sort of kits on eBay or like I say, you can buy this sort of material in a hobby shop and um, I recommend using a guillotine. You can cut it to the, the sort of the, the width that you want and um, you can buy this stuff pre-cut or you can cut it yourself. It's very, very thin. I can't remember what it is, about two millimetres, three millimetres, something like that. It lasts a long time. I've had this kit for about 20 years, so it's a good investment. And there she is. That one's done. Ready for use. Thank you very much for watching. Hope you found it interesting. Comments, questions, queries down below. Like and subscribe and all that good stuff. And um, hope to see you in the next one.